uh, first of all, big, big warning. Uh, that patch set uh, is very much a work in, product, a work in progress. Uh, it's completely untested. I can't uh, promise that in current form it will even build on anything other than uh, x86. Uh, seeing that I've reshuffled it several times already here and I don't have a cross-build setup uh, on that laptop. So uh, treat it as uh, obviously dangerous. Now, uh, uh, a while ago, I think it was in uh, early 2000s, uh, there was a uh, hack uh, used for uh, RamFS. Uh, it was basically, it was, I, I think it was Linus' demonstration of uh, how to do a file system without any kind of uh, uh, back-end store. Uh, and the uh, solution was pretty simple. Uh, keep all files and directories in the cache and uh, basically arrange a controlled de-entry leak. So when you create an object, you just leak a reference. When you remove it, well, you drop a reference, also unbalanced. Uh, and on uh, file system shutdown, well, you need to go through all objects and uh, anything that hadn't been removed yet uh, needs to needs a reference dropped. Nice and uh, nice, simple and. Uh, it actually works well. Uh, it had been with some modifications used for uh, TMP, TMPFS, for huge TLBFS, in a lot of other places. Unfo unfortunately, it uh, has overgrown the original scope, very much so. So originally it was everything is uh, controlled by normal system calls with normal file system semantics. And all you need to do is just to put deget and deput into methods that create and remove objects uh, respectively. Very, very, very simple. And mark it so that on unmount, the remaining leaks would be taken care of. Unfortunately, pretty soon, uh, people started using it for uh, file systems populated by, by the kernel. Some of that had been uh, in response to uh, system calls like MQ, for example. The system calls are there, but they are not usual create and uh, unlink. Uh, in some cases, it was uh, really some strange calls done by, directly by drivers to show what they want to show. It was simpler than uh, uh, showing stuff in ProcFS, but uh, unfortunately uh, there are problems uh, appearing in that kind of setups that do not show up in uh, original use. Uh, one particularly obnoxious example is that uh, Unlink and RMDR know what object you are removing. So if uh, in another namespace something had been mounted on that directory, okay, system call knows uh, that this directory is going down, it knows to look around for uh, something mounted on it, and okay. But there is no way in hell for right system call to know that this string written to that file on uh, BNFMT MISC file system will result in removal of that file, of another file on the same file system. There is no way in hell uh, uh, system call can, the part in VFS uh, can handle it. It's, uh, that knowledge is impossible to put there. So it has to be dealt with by file system. 
What, what, I, what file system does this? Unregistering an entry on uh, BNFMT MISC. It's done by writing three, I think, in some file in that file system, and uh, it takes out that file if uh, it had been a for specific one, or all of them if uh, it had been. There, it, it, it's really completely insane, would be completely insane to expect that handled by SysRate. Especially since something like that could be done by Octal, but by any number of uh, random stuff. Uh, so uh, it has to be handled by a file system. And uh, it's done inconsistently, and to put it politely. Uh, the next lovely source of problems is that normally RMDIR is done on empty directory. And if it's not empty, Sorry, but we fail. <sighs> Unfortunately, along comes ConfigFS, where MKDIR, uh, in places where it's possible, creates not one directory, but uh, directory with a bunch of files and bunch of subdirectories in it. Uh, and it expects RMDIR on that same place to take out the entire bunch. Uh, what gets even better uh, is that uh, if uh, and that sub subtree might have other places where you could do MKDIR. And if you have done MKDIR there, well, then it's suddenly, it suddenly should notice that it's not empty and fail. Yes? The, 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 this is something uh, that C Group FS does as well. Like a non-empty, like a C group directory has files in it, yes, and you can, yes, and yes. also you can make the that's another yes, category. yes. Uh, but uh, configFS is particularly obnoxious. Uh, things get really nasty. By the way, uh, if you are creating a subtree, by that I'm your operation can fail. Uh, and preferably, well, one would expect that uh, operation failing would remove everything it has already created. But what if somebody opens a file that has shown up just during that failed attempt to create a subtree? Uh, and there is uh, rather scary uh, logics for preventing that. Even better, uh, RMDIR needs to, well, besides checking that uh, uh, nothing had been MKDIR inside, it has to check for MKDIR in progress, wait for it to finish or fail, well, to, to succeed or fail, and then move on. And, and that's, I, I wouldn't recommend anyone uh, looking at that code unless you want to take another look at whatever you have eaten. Uh, it's really horrible. Uh, so yeah, it's a case of file system being on its own and it's screwing up by the numbers. It's uh, config first at least tries. Uh, what happens for other file systems? Well, you might be lucky, you might be not. And uh, we really need some infrastructure for handling that. Yes? Uh, I, I don't know if I'm the only one that's wondering this, but I was wondering on the previous point, if you could take a moment to just walk us through the mechanism that ends up with writing to a file causing an RM minus RF. I missed it. A piece of the puzzle there. Uh, BNFMT MISC. Uh, when you are, uh, uh, when you can register uh, handlers for uh, various uh, executable formats, it's usually for, for, for Java stuff, for, for crap like that, for uh, emulation of uh, binaries from other architectures, 
uh, and you can define your own handlers along with the patterns. It's and just special file systems. Yes, and it's the expressed as a file system. That generates uh, entries from underneath. It's just not created via VFS system calls. But VFS system calls are used to control it by writing to that files, to those files. So unfortunately, uh, for a lot of that, uh, the answer, well, don't do that kind of uh, obnoxious uh, interfaces. It's too late. It's, uh, it's too late by a couple of decades. Uh, it's user interfaces uh, that had been used by a bunch of software, so we are stuck with them. Uh, and uh, we need at least some tools for file systems to cope with uh, that kind of garbage without uh, that much uh, pain and uh, that much open coding. Because uh, I, I think there had been about a dozen of uh, uh, implementations of, uh, well, we need to uh, remove that directory with all subdirectories. And they had been done badly. So, uh, 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 one uh, rather obnoxious, oh, by the way, all of that is uh, on uh, FTP Linux or UK, pub people Vero notes. It should be seen here. Anyway, uh, so uh, uh, one approach to uh, untangling that would be to uh, actually mark the moments when we are uh, leaking. Because right now it's uh, completely uh, unmarked. It's, well, it's deget uh, here, it's, it's all lack of deput there. And uh, trying to uh, sort of, and those entries are not marked themselves in any way. So uh, uh, the first step is to start marking them. So new flag, a uh, couple of primitives, make persistent and make discardable. That would be essentially counterparts of deget and deput. Uh, setting and clearing that flag. So uh, simple RMD and simple unlink, which are helpers used for uh, undoing those leaks. It's, uh, for RMFS, uh, that's just the unlink and RMD and a bunch of other file systems uh, might be using them as straight methods, might be calling them from methods. So uh, making them uh, call uh, make discardable instead of deput. Uh, now, uh, when collecting uh, victims for kill litter sub uh, super, uh, skip uh, marked search. For uh, shrink decache for unmount, if uh, we seek uh, an entry with, with that flag set, clear it and decrement. So uh, if all entries are correctly marked, we don't need kill liter super at, at all. We just can use kill unknown super. Uh, oh, and by the way, eventually uh, uh, badly named function uh, goes away. Uh, not that uh, I cared about its name, but anyway. Uh, that was uh, what actually got me uh, into, looking, uh, into looking at that crap again. It was what yeah. Uh, next, uh, dialog persistent. Well, allocate and mark. Uh, for uh, situations when uh, we have a uh, request to create something from, coming from the kernel, and where we know that name is good and unique, 
where I say uh, uh, we have a counter of uh, some devices and uh, for each of them we create a subdirectory just by, with name just being decimal representation of that counter. That's fine. Uh, so uh, uh, for uh, uh, a situation when name comes from New Zealand, uh, we need a bit more because we need to check that name doesn't happen to be dot dot that doesn't contain slash that uh, and uh, we need to uh, we need the parent locked to avoid obvious races and we need to check that uh, object doesn't exist by now we have that uh, open coded in a bunch of places well debug fs all of them uh, so I took that to separate helper, and yeah, that helper marks them persistent. So uh, after that, we can start uh, dealing with file system one by one. And most of the time, uh, conversion is really, is really trivial. Stuff like, okay, we have dget, dentry, slash, slash, uh, pin it down in dcache, fine replace with dmake persistent. It, it's on that level. Uh, now, uh, another, and when that's done, well, uh, file system can switch to kill unknown super and uh, forget about uh, kill liter super. Another uh, area is uh, removal of uh, subtrees. There is a primitive that does it more or less correctly. It's uh, simple recursive removal. Uh, it takes care of anything potentially mounted, there, all this stuff. Uh, it needed to be uh, used in several remaining places where we did take, well, put it that way. Uh, there was a bunch of uh, places that, yeah, we create a subtree, we create a directory, we create this, 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 uh, subdirectories in it, we create such and such files in them, and if that failed, we manually remove them all. And that manually remove them all uh, had been a mess. And uh, uh, most of that uh, gets replaced by, hey, just remove that subtree. Uh, there are two variants, uh, one that had been there for a while, that's simple recurse for removal. Uh, another uh, for situations when parent is held locked, simple recurse for removal will of course, would of course need to lock it just for removing our to the, uh, from removal, remo removing our element from its parent directory. So it can be used when a parent is locked. Well, okay, uh, variant that takes locked parent and does the right thing. Uh, okay, uh, that's, uh, and re result in cleanups, uh, that's what I've got in, in that branch. It's 58 com commits right now, uh, diff stat, minus 500 lines of code. And that's really nasty lines of code. Uh, and that uh, hadn't gotten to, uh, uh, yeah, uh, file systems yet to be uh, converted uh, to uh, uh, around USB gadgets, where I don't know the surrounding code well enough to tell what to do there. I need to talk to Greg, I guess. Uh, configure first. I hope to catch uh, Christoph, but no such luck. And uh, up armor. Uh, configure first is awful in one way, a parameter is awful in many, many, many other ways. Uh, looking for starters. Uh, they have uh, locks of their own, and they uh, 
can be arbitrarily nested. The problem is they nest, they correspond to uh, directory depth, and they nest between IRWSM on those directories. So uh, RMDIR, the uh, unlocks the victim, unlocks the parent, locks that lock of them of those, grabs VFS locks again. Oh, and if somebody already called RMD on that, well, too bad. Hey, it's security; it doesn't need to make sense. Because, of course, if somebody has uh, privileges to mess with uh, uh, a Parmer FS, they already own the box. So who cares about uh, anything like that? And it's not that they cared about validation of uh, profi Parmer profiles when they're parsing them. Hey, it's trusted. Because if you can't trust that, then, then you are screwed anyway. But anyway, uh, a Parmer is, is a separate story. I don't want to uh, touch it. Uh, I tried to talk to uh, a Parmer folks about uh, the local issues a while ago, got nowhere. But anyway, uh, uh, configure first. Uh, is where I would like to try uh, a neat trick. The thing is, uh, most of the problems there is with half-built subtrees on MKDIR. Similar problems exist on Onaza, but there we just don't try to prevent opening something in partially created subtree and, and stuff like that. Uh, for configure first, we do. Uh, the trick is, uh, MKDIR doesn't have to make the entry that had been passed to it, doesn't have to make it positive. Normally it does. For local file system, it, it tends to do so. But all colors of uh, VFS MKDIR have to cope with possibility that uh, it will report success and leave uh, the D entry we had given to it negative unhashed. Well, then it repeats uh, decache lookup and, uh, and there you go. Uh, and that allows to build that subtree disconnected from decache, from, from, anyth from anything else in decache. And if it has been built correctly, okay? So we do display alias. We attach, we, we pretend to, that, that we are in lookup that attaches, that, that has found the inode we want. And since it's a directory, which can have only one de-entry. So okay, we need to move that de-entry in place of the one we, are try, we were trying to attach the inode to. And that's atomic. So uh, if uh, creation of subtree failed, well, we can conveniently dissolve it. Nobody could have touched it yet. So uh, I don't, uh, uh, at the moment, uh, have uh, uh, decided which uh, set of primitives would be convenient for that, which set of helpers would be convenient for that. Just need to get through uh, the really complicated case and uh, see what works well. But uh, I hope to, I, I originally I hope to do that on configure first. But unfortunately, Christopher is not here and uh, asking uh, questions uh, f to him over email, it's, it's being slow. Uh, so I'm going to try uh, other file systems that uh, uh, have uh, that kind of fun. Uh, hopefully by tomorrow I'll have something to... Uh, He's supposed push. to arrive, I've been told, Christoph. Sorry? 
Christoph is supposed to arrive today, I'm told. Just so you know. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> then maybe I'll catch him. Maybe he will be in shape for, in shape for answering questions. On the other hand, uh, I suspect that uh, getting here was uh, sufficiently unpleasant uh, that uh, um, idea of discussing that um, might be unwelcome. So, uh, yeah, well, that's it for a moment. Hey, Al. Uh, so I might have missed it. I see how creating the subtree and then splicing it in solves the makedir problem. I'm not sure how that solves the recursive rmdir magic problem. Uh, okay. <laughs> that uh, sounds terrifying. So uh, <laughs> It doesn't. Uh, well, the problem is that the check for uh, something being busy uh, has to uh, deal with, uh, well, since the part, of, well, they are fine with uh, RMDIR coming before MKDIR started to create the entries. In that case, MKDIR just fails. They are fine with uh, RMDIR coming after MKDIR has created that crap, because then it sees that, oops, it's not empty, we're, we're done. Uh, the problem is that switch from one to another is not atomic. It, it can be done under a spin lock. Uh, better yet, uh, objects in uh, configure first uh, are associated with a structure uh, that refers to created by the same action. Right. And we could put uh, basically busy counts on that thing, which would eliminate working the tree and uh, doing all the scrap. So when they want to deallocate that structure, they're willing to do the moral equivalent of an RM-R on yes. that subtree. OK. OK. Two minutes under time, so. Uh, Steven? Sorry? Stuff relevant for subvolume deletion in bcacheFS and ButterFS. We've got to do an RMR if it's non persistent entries. Uh, I'd need to check. I hadn't looked at what bcacheFS uh, might oh. be doing in that area. Uh, there had been amusing places. Uh, there is, for example, uh, an unlikely candidate, Prokofus. There is a couple of persistent de entries in there. Proc self and proc thread self. Uh, which we need to keep references to because we need uh, on uh, in kill SB, we need to deput them. Marking them persistent avoids that. And after that, the only remaining users uh, of those, uh, there is a couple of users, and it's laughable. Uh, guess what? It's read dir on root, on Prokofus root. Why would it need those D entries? Well, it wants to report correct inode numbers, you, you, you see. Okay, except that if you look at uh, fsprocsel.c, you see that it sets inode number manually to match what it has in local variable. Static and fail. So uh, why not use it instead of? There is some uh, stuff in uh, Dean Root on AFS that also tries to do uh, something similar uh, only uh, <coughs> it has to uh, manually iterate through the places where those subdirectories might be. It marks them in a different way. But anyway, that crap just 
went away, just mark them and regular logics on unmount will take them out. I don't know about uh, because if, if you could drop me a reference to uh, likely places uh, where that might be useful, sure. Shooting down a tree of uh, de entries shouldn't. Sorry? It also seems from a high level like shooting down de entries shouldn't be that different if they're persistent or non persistent. And I believe we've also been talking about getting away from the whole concept of persistent de entries because pinning de entries and, and inodes in, in RAM uses. Sorry? Pinning a whole lot of, whole lot of de entries and inodes in RAM. Uh, Stephen was running into this. Well, uh, where would you want them to come back from? Uh, some kind of more space efficient data structure. Sorry? Some kind of more space efficient data structure. Like, and I know it is a key. Lovely. So uh, we get to. Uh, oh, joy. So we get uh, some uh, different tree, the tree of different structures. Uh, that would be uh, populated by uh, those file systems. Um, and that would be a manipulated joy. Note, by the way, that ConfigFS uh, uh, doesn't have uh, uh, regular files uh, persistent. Yeah, it, it seems like the, all that stuff is a v an abuse of VFS data structures that were originally intended for caching. Uh, it kind of seems like maybe config effects. It's not for caching, yeah. really. Well, Those data structures are not for caching. No more than BSD vnodes, say, for example. It's an object rep representing a uh, file system object. It's not a cache with, uh, uh, oh, yeah, disk, uh, blah, 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 behind is responsible for that. No. Uh, it's, uh, it's the objects uh, with which uh, uh, the kernel works. Same as struct file. Yeah, sure, it's dynamic. It's created when you're opening, but uh, it's not a cache. It, it, can be, it has state that can be recreated when. Well, what would you call that then, if not cache for caching? I mean, strict file is different because it's, but I know it in de-entry. I know it in de-entry. Uh, okay. So, don't you guys continue talking? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 